so the issue is that the, the lawyers write the legislation to make it easy to win lawsuits in California because they they so they they funded the election of the officials of of the, the the people that got elected got funded by Democrats and lawyers. So then they write the legislation to make it easy to win lawsuits and, and get gigantic awards because they got the people elected. And you have this sort of circle of this nightmarish circle mm -hmm. until there has to be an above 0% chance of a Republican getting elected in California. It has to be above 0%. Otherwise, you have a one-party state. To escape the blue curtain of California, Elon Musk decides to choose Texas as the brain of his rocket empire. But, in fact, Musk has been staking out territory in Texas for years now. And not just because he has major beef with the Golden State. Elon has much obsession with the Lone Star State, given its law allows for easier town incorporation compared to California. Thanks to that, his billion-dollar plan has finally come true. Stay tuned to find out how Musk's Texas dream could reshape the future of innovation. SpaceX started to find Texas appealing for rocket launch sites in the early 2010s. As the draft environmental impact statement, SpaceX Texas launch site released by the FAA stated that the purpose was to provide SpaceX an exclusive launch site that would allow the company to accommodate its launch manifest and meet tight launch windows. To build the new commercial launch facility between 2012 and 2014, SpaceX considered seven potential locations around the United States. For much of this period, a parcel of land adjacent to Boca Chica Beach near Brownsville, Texas, was the leading candidate location. Finally, in August 2014, after extensive environmental assessments by the FAA, SpaceX officially selected Boca Chica Village, 350 miles south of Austin, as the site for its non-governmental launch facility. This decision was influenced by factors such as proximity to the equator and large unpopulated areas suitable for safety. During launches, soil preparation commenced in October 2015, transforming the remote coastal area into a bustling spaceport. SpaceX invested heavily in infrastructure, building launch pads, fuel storage facilities, and tracking systems. Initially intended for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches, by early 2018, SpaceX announced that Starbase would be dedicated exclusively to the development and testing of its next-generation vehicle. Starship, between 2018 and 2020, Starbase became a hub for rocket production and testing. The site saw rapid advancements with multiple high-altitude test flights that contributed valuable data for refining Starship's design. In 2020, SpaceX achieved several successful landings during these tests, marking significant progress in reusable rocket technology. In 2021, SpaceX CEO proposed the idea to turn the Boca Chica site, later renamed Starbase, into its own city, however, it was not until December 12th that a petition was officially filed with the support of Starbase residents. As operations expanded, environmental advocates raised concerns about the impact of increased launches on local ecosystems. SpaceX faced scrutiny over wastewater management practices linked to its testing activities. From 2023 onwards, SpaceX attempted six integrated flight tests of Starship. As of late 2024, SpaceX sought to increase its annual launch capacity from 5 to 25 per year at Starbase. The FAA indicated it would grant permission for this expansion, contingent on meeting licensing criteria. In the meantime, Starbase continues to evolve with ongoing construction and testing activities. According to SpaceX's president, Gwyn Shotwell, the company has invested approximately $3 billion in the development of the Starship rocket and its associated facilities. Over $1 billion of this investment was made in Texas within the past year. This includes investing in Star Factory, a 1 million square foot manufacturing facility at SpaceX's Starbase in South Texas that is designed to produce Starship components and rockets. And now SpaceX can call Starbase home as Elon announced on X that 
SpaceX headquarters will now officially be in the city of Starbase, Texas. As a part of the trend of businesses moving out of California, SpaceX's headquarters move is a natural consequence of the Golden State's lack of favorable business conditions. The latest example is California's recent payroll tax increases, which are due to the state's ongoing budget shortfall and changes in federal requirements. Specifically, businesses in California have reported payroll taxes that are significantly higher than previously calculated, with some experiencing increases of around $2,000, which represents about 10% of their total payroll. The impact is significant as business owners are bearing the brunt of these tax increases as the state seeks to balance its budget. This situation has prompted discussions about California's business climate, with many citing these tax hikes as evidence of an increasingly unfriendly environment for businesses. Elon Musk considered this like eating its golden geese. In reality, the big private companies have contributed billions of dollars to the state's economy, and their relocation means a loss of tax revenue and economic activity. Over time, the cumulative effect of this shift could result in the loss of several billion dollars. For the first time since 1851, California experienced net negative migration in 2020, with a loss of approximately 211,000 residents. California's job creation record has also become dismal over nearly two years. Since January 2023, private sector employment in the state declined by over 46,000 workers. California's private sector job collapse is unprecedented, and with the state representing nearly 12 percent of the country's population, it is a drag on the nation's economy. Of course, SpaceX, even though it has been in Texas for a long time, but it's not the pathfinder. Let's talk about Tesla. The electric car company made a big relocation from Palo Alto, California to Austin, Texas on December 1, 2021. Now this all began properly in the spring of 2020 when the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, refused to allow Tesla's Fremont plant to reopen despite Musk's demands due to COVID-19. Despite this, Musk announced on X that production would resume, stating, Tesla is restarting production today against Alameda County rules and declaring he would be on the assembly line himself. He even suggested that if anyone should be arrested for this defiance, it should be him. This bold move came just as Tesla began deliveries of its new Model Y crossover, showcasing the company's determination to ramp up production even as much of the world was slowing down due to health concerns. Musk's actions were not without consequences. Shortly after reopening, reports indicated that approximately 450 workers at the Fremont plant contracted COVID-19 between May and December 2020, raising serious concerns about workplace safety. Musk's frustration with the restrictions led him to file a lawsuit against Alameda County, claiming that the shutdown orders were unjust and that Tesla had been unfairly singled out compared to other manufacturers. His public statements during this period included dismissing COVID-related shutdowns as fascist and urging for a swift return to normalcy, with slogans like, Free America Now. Ultimately, Musk threatened to relocate Tesla's headquarters and future programs to states like Texas and Nevada if the situation did not improve. In response, Newsom downplayed the significance of the Tesla headquarters shift, noting that Musk announced plans to ramp up production at a California plant and pointing to Musk's commercial spaceflight company, SpaceX leasing office space in Long Beach. The governor also argued that California fueled Tesla's success, pointing to the millions of dollars that California has spent to subsidize the burgeoning electric car industry. Despite this conflict, Musk demonstrated a commitment to philanthropy in California in 2020 through the Musk Foundation. His contributions included significant donations aimed at enhancing education and advancing medical research. Musk donated to the Merman School for Gifted Children, reflecting his interest in fostering educational opportunities for talented youth. 
Additionally, he provided financial support to exclusive private schools in Los Angeles, such as Crossroads School for Arts and Sciences and the Windward School, which are known for their rigorous academic programs. Also, he made a notable grant to the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, which focuses on research into the therapeutic potential of psychedelics. This donation aligns with Musk's broader interest in innovative approaches to mental health treatment. The relationship between Musk and Newsom has deteriorated, particularly following Musk's public declaration of non-support for President Biden in 2023. After Musk's announcement, Newsom criticized him on social media, suggesting that Musk had bent the knee to former President Trump. Musk did not hold back in his rebuttal, responding to Newsom's comment with a sharp retort, you never get off your knees. In addition, Newsom has sparred with Musk on X over a bill the governor signed banning political deepfakes. Musk responded to a measure outlawing AI-generated content before the November election by referring to Newsom as an evil comic character. The Joker is in charge, Musk wrote on X, repeating the insult in an interview. Nevertheless, this does not mean that their relationship is full of hatred. In fact, the governor of California showed his supportive opinion of Elon Musk in the fight against the California Coastal Commission, as this commission rejected SpaceX's plan to increase rocket launches on Vandenberg. I'm with Elon. I didn't like that. Look, I'm not helping the legal case. You can't introduce that level of politics, Newsom said, signaling support for Musk's lawsuit. He criticized the commission for focusing on Musk's political activities instead of the permit's merits. Along with Newsom, on October 18th, the U.S. Space Force awarded SpaceX $733.6 million in the form of two National Security Space Launch Phase, three-lane, one-launch service task orders. SpaceX and ULA were eligible to compete for those launches, and SpaceX won them all. More importantly, all of these national security launches would take place from Vandenberg, where the California Coastal Commission recently rejected SpaceX's plan to launch 50 missions there. Well, you can understand this as a protectionist move by the Space Force towards SpaceX at Vandenberg. The Space Force will do whatever they damned well please if they're launching national security missions. It's a plot twist because they previously agreed to all of the Commission's demands regarding environmental safeguards and monitoring at Vandenberg for the increased number of SpaceX launches. Among that is to set up an interagency working group that includes U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the National Marine Fisheries Service, and the Federal Aviation Administration to address concerns as the number of launches increases. This is obviously not good for SpaceX's operation in this place. It seems that, for now, things are back to square one as Newsom continues to fight against the new Trump administration. During Trump 1.0, Newsom's administration was marked by a reactive legal strategy, with California filing over 120 lawsuits against the Trump administration, addressing issues like immigration, environmental regulations, and health care. Most were successful. This period saw a relatively uncoordinated response as many lawsuits were initiated as reactions to specific Trump policies and executive orders. By contrast, in Trump's second term, Newsom's approach has become more proactive and organized. He has called for a special legislative session to secure $25 million for legal defenses against anticipated Trump policies, indicating a strategic preparation for potential legal battles before Trump's inauguration. Trump has indicated plans to target specific California laws related to voter ID requirements, water management policies, vehicle emission standards, unauthorized immigrants, and gender-related issues in schools. He has also threatened to withhold disaster aid if Newsom does not comply with his demands regarding water management. This broadens the scope of potential conflict beyond previous issues. In a retaliatory move, Mr. Newsom said on November 25th that he planned to implement a $7,500 rebate for electric vehicle purchases in California, contingent on the potential repeal 
of the federal EV tax credit by Trump. However, this rebate would notably exclude Tesla vehicles, which has drawn significant backlash from Elon Musk and supporters of Tesla. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.